Ramanujan for G is now available on the Google Play Store. Try it out for free. Hi students. So we continue our discussion of um, simple harmonic motion. I'll do a few closing thoughts on what we were doing last week. Okay. Before I move on to the second part of this discussion. Okay. Now, <clears throat> in the case of a simple pendulum, right? The case of a simple pendulum. How does simple harmonic motion work? Right? So we discussed this um, we discussed this last week, right? So <clears throat> the simple pendulum works uh, 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 using simple harmonic motion. For small amplitudes, that is the most important idea there. Okay. And so, how does it work? So, there is a thin thread. Okay. Then there is a uh, heavy mass, thin weightless thread, and a heavy mass at the end. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what happens? You move the thread by a short distance. When you move the thread by a short distance, what are all the forces that are acting? T, right? T and mg, right? So now mg and this angle is theta. Theta is very small, right? Now mg cos theta equals t, okay? But there is also mg sine theta, okay? The mg sine theta is going to act almost perpendicularly because the theta is very small. Okay, So now um, <clears throat> for very small angles, sine theta is equal to theta in radians. Okay, So mg sine theta is the force that is acting in the horizontal direction okay now what is sine theta what is theta right or sine theta sine theta is merely x over l right so x over l right so negative mg x over l okay so <clears throat> Negative mg x over L is the force that is perpendicular to the tension. Okay, so it is the restoring force. Okay, so when the pendulum reaches the bottommost position, what is that restoring force? Zero, because theta goes to zero, right? So x goes to then x goes to zero, right? So you have this negative proportion to x okay so if theta is is in this direction the x is in that direction therefore it is it is most when you are here and least when you are in the vertical position zero zero when you're in the vertical position right so minus kx so what is k it is this Right? So now <clears throat> the force is this, it is acting on this ball, right? So, and this ball is experiencing MA. MA is always in this direction, right? So, MD square x by dt square is equal to minus mg x over L. So, now with the M, you, you cancel out the M, and therefore you have the Classical simple harmonic motion d square x by dt square equals minus g over l times x. So g over l equals omega square. If you forgot what omega square is, remember what omega square is.
رسوا okay this is the main equation d square x by dt square equals minus omega square x so anything that goes into that form you write it uh, in this in this uh, uh, form and uh, you, uh, uh, you you kind of uh, work with that, okay? So negative d square x, so just like you had k over m equals omega square, similarly, you have, um, uh, you, have uh, 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 you have your uh, g over l equals omega square. And therefore, you 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 have this whole uh, equation uh, working out uh, for you okay so um, So that is the most important idea. Negative k over m equals omega square, right? Like that. Neg uh, or k over m equals omega square, like that. G over L equals omega square. Okay. So when g over L equals omega square, then you have all these equations in the case of the simple pendulum, right? So g over L equals omega square. So now square root of g over l equals omega and omega equals 2 pi by t. So that's the basics. And therefore, you have uh, t equals 2 pi times square root of l over g. Okay. So you first uh, get, find out what omega is and then you're all set in solving all these problems. Okay. So omega square equals g over l, t 2 pi by t equals root of g over l. Okay. So now, when you have a rigid rod like that, right, then also you have simple harmonic motion, but it is a torque equation. Okay, The torque equation is like this. The torque equals I alpha. What is I? I is R cross F. R is L by 2. F is Mg sine theta. Again. Okay, so only thing is now you have the, you have this equation, right? So mg sine theta. So now, and that is equal to i alpha, okay? And i is what? ml square by 3. Therefore, you have one l on the right-hand side and then you have an l square on the right-hand side. So you again end up with l in the denominators. But only thing is, you you have this added 3 by 2 term. Okay. So omega square equals g by L times 3 by 2. Okay. So omega square equals g by L times 3 by 2. So that's how you end up with this whole equation. Okay. Now I we looked at this problem with the simple pendulum. Then um you know, in this case, this is, uh, you know, this is not a simple pendulum problem. This is not a simple harmonic motion problem. This is a, a train in a trolley problem. Very different. Although they say simple pendulum, immediately you don't think of simple harmonic motion, right? The other set of problems deal with pseudo force. Okay. So now I'm going to now discuss this other thing called a torsional pendulum. In the case of a torsional pendulum, tau equals k theta, right? So torsional pendulum swings like this, okay? This whole thing swings, rotates. It has a rotational motion. So there is a state of rest. So if you twist it, then it is like a spring. It's a angular twist, okay? So when you move it this way, the spring tends to restore it. So there are two forces that see this here this is a spring okay so when you twist it the spring is stretched therefore the spring tends to push it that way and then push it that way and then push it that way and then push it that way okay so that is the spring there that is the spring 
okay so how does that work so you again have the same equation tau equals k times theta where k is the spring constant okay so tau equals k times theta and then you have this other term called uh, and tau equals i alpha and i is some value that they will give you in the as part of the problem okay so now tau equals uh, so uh, omega square equals k over i therefore you then start 2 pi by t etc omega equals 2 pi by t and then you write it down okay. now <coughs> um, so this problem is they are talking about a change in the g 2 pi times root of l by g right if you go into a different planet you will have a different g right so now the mass and diameter of a, of, of a planet are twice those of earth right remember g this little g is equal to g capital m by r square right so now if the mass is 2x and the r is also 2x right so what will you end up we'll end up with g being half g in the new planet right so it is in the earth it is 2 pi times root of l by g in the other planets 2 pi times root of l by g prime and g prime is g by 2 therefore you end up so the period will become 2 pi times root of uh, root 2 times l over g so if it was one second here it will be root 2 seconds there right so that's the calculation so you can change the l you can change the g but you cannot but changing the mass does not help you okay now uh, so <clears throat> so now we come back to this idea of energy conservation okay see in a gravitational uh, conserving field right what happens is we introduce this term called potential energy right now in a spring that potential energy is what it takes to to expand the spring or compress the spring okay so when you have a mass attached to the it is going this way that way this way that way this way that way right now when it does this this way that way this way that way this way that way the overall energy is conserved why is it conserved any force of the form f of r where the force is a function of r and here it's a function of r or a function of x right where the force is essentially a constant times x anytime you have that kind of a force it is a conserving field it produces a conserving field and as a result so gravitation gmm by r squared conserving field that's why we talk about ngh potential energy right Simple harmonic motion, Gx, Kx, conserving field. Uh, what is that? Um, um, uh, new, uh, 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 Coulomb's law, right? Charges in a force field, two charges in a field, conserving field. 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught, Q1, Q2 by R squared, conserving field, right? So, in such fields, what is the total energy? The total energy continues to be always half k square or half m omega square a square. Okay, so the amplitude is of that, right? So using that, you can calculate the you get the amplitude, you get the you get the k and half k a square will give you the total energy, or it is half m a square omega square okay so using that why is it like that so you just write it in this form a sine omega t right the do to the 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 like do half mv square right so this one is half kx square do and this one is half mv square so the a square and the b square they are just 90 degrees out of proportion so one is the sign the other is the cause when you add the two you end up with a square half k a square or half m omega square okay so m omega square equals k 
k why is that omega square equals k over m you see so <coughs> so omega square equals k over m therefore m omega square equals k and the total energy is half k a square so if you compress the spring with the spring constant k the amount to which you've compressed is the amount of energy you imparted that is kx dx so integral kx dx is f uh, f x uh, kx dx integral 0 to a a is the maximum compression right so you have compressed it that much you have done so much work kx 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 so you sum all the kx 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 so integral kx dx right so that is the work you've done you were kept on applying a kx force till till your hand ached so what is the total work you did integral kx dx and therefore integral kx dx equals half k square total energy conserved stays constant so at any point you can calculate the energy okay so <clears throat> A particle of mass 40 uh, grams executes a simple harmonic motion ampli of amplitude 2. So he's giving you M, he's giving you A, he is giving, if the period is 0 0.2, he's giving you omega, right? So then find the total mechanical energy. Notice uh, the, the point he's making. Total mechanical energy, half M A square omega square. Okay, so when you learn these things, Remember, it's mathematics under a different name. Okay. So, suppose that the potential energy of a particle constrained to move along the x axis described by u of x equals half kx square minus ax. What are the equilibrium points? The equilibrium points are those points, are those points where it turns. Okay. Where the derivative of the potential energy becomes a zero. So, where is the derivative of the potential energy? Zero. There are three points. One is the low point. The other is a high point. Okay. Therefore, it is at zero. And so, in this case, he gets kx equals to a. K, so, uh, x equals a over k. Okay. So, now, <coughs> the other points are x equals a over k is the only stable equilibrium point the other points and that is where your the derivative goes to zero for the potential energy okay and it is a the second derivative should be okay so <clears throat> you look at the second derivative as well in some cases right so when you take the second derivative you have a it is non zero in this case, what is the second derivative, right? Second derivative is k, non-zero. When it's non-zero, say it's a stable point, okay? So, um, okay, so x equals a over k is a stable. Now, zero, the total energy is zero. The total potential energy is zero. Uh, the other one, 2a by k, the total energy is again zero. Okay, so points where the potential energy goes to zero, right, reflect points which are maximum, uh, which are which which have maximum kinetic energy. You see, when you talk of potential energy in, in oscillating pa particles, essentially the energy total energy is conserved, right? So that's the point there. So now we are going to discuss <coughs> this next set of ideas dealing with damping okay now a forged undamped oscillator see an undamped oscillator is one which oscillates without the influence of external forces okay so now it's a spring mass system in a frictionless table it will just keep swinging all the time forever okay now it is an it is undamped because it happens forever d square x by dt equals d square equals minus kx leads to this happening forever. Okay. So, a spring mass system without damping will keep doing this forever. A pendulum, if it is undamped, will keep oscillating forever. So, these are ideal situations. Most often, as you all know, there is friction in the world. Everything is stopped because there is friction. Okay. 
And so therefore, this is a ideal case. Now, when you introduce that added friction, what happens? Okay. So <clears throat> even the case where you have a second conserving field, G, it stays. You suspend it from the ceiling, although there is a second force. Second force is also conserving. Therefore, it does this. There is no damping of the total energy. When there is damping of total energy, like if you had a the, the, the block in a frictioned surface, not frictionless, frictioned surface, in that case, it will be oscillatory. Uh, there is always work being done to reduce the energy held and therefore it slowly comes to a stop. Okay. Damped. Okay. The amplitude will be damped. So how long will that take is not known. So I don't know if how many of you have been on a swing, right? In a swing, what a lot of people do is at the lowest point, the swing is set up so your feet touch the ground at the lowest point. Okay. The swing is suspended from the top so that at the lowest point, your feet touch the ground. So what do your feet do? They kick you. What are you doing? You are applying a force on the ground, okay, to do work. As you kick each time, you are providing that little bit of extra work to keep the swing going forever. <clears throat> so, this is a way to counteract the continuous damping that goes on due to friction, okay. So, this happens due to friction. You keep kicking, you kicking it every time. It will keep oscillating forever, and that is the principle. Also, remember that a spring is just like a capacitor. Okay, so this is also the principle that you will learn when you go to class twelve and you learn about these oscillate oscillations in circuits. There also there is a natural damping, and then you set it up to uh, to 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 be an oscillator forever okay and this is part of uh, you know this kind of feedback loop based uh, control is part of negative feedback which is extensively used in both control systems in electrical engineering in uh, uh, also in uh, mechanical engineering and it has broad implications across the board okay so everything there is control and there is negative feedback and that negative feedback is used to drive these functions. So now, <clears throat> instead of uh, F being a constant, replace it with a periodically changing force, F equals F cos omega t, then the equation changes. Okay. So now, in the previous case, you had this constant force mg, which is based on g, right? It did not cause any change in the uh, oscillation, right? So you just had with a shifted equilibrium position by right? the omega stayed the same, right? The omega stayed the same, right? Omega square equals k over m, still k over m, right? With a shifted equilibrium position, or you only shifted the equilibrium position. But then if you introduce this f cos instead of constant force, you change it to a periodic force, the whole equation changes. Therefore, you have a, a sin omega t dependence in the solved differential equation. Previously, the differential equation was what? d square x by dt square equals negative omega square x. Now there is a second term. That second term changes the solution. Okay? And that solution introduces, in addition to the basic solution, a second term. Okay, And this term <clears throat> has certain conditions under which it goes back to this. You can use this, uh, set this up to go back to this, okay, when you have what is called resonance or there is continuous damping which slows you down, okay. So the details of that differential equation and the spring mass system with that F cos omega t, with the showing the additional force condition, is little beyond it because the the uh, you know you are not going to learn all the um, uh, differential equations needed for it. 
Okay. And so as a general rule, this is the overall equation. We get the general solution to be this. Okay. And these two, this sine omega t and this delta omega, right? These two will dictate your two sides. Okay. And so, um, <clears throat> so within a certain window, right, of omega and omega naught, notice that we introduce a, the second omega is different from this omega naught. If this omega and this omega naught were the same, you have a different uh, 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 relationship, and that is where you have resonance. Okay, as omega tends to omega naught, you have resonance. As omega is little lesser, you then have situations where there is damping, or there is there is some situation where it goes once and then it holds the first time itself. Okay, so now uh, 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 when you have uh, omega nearing omega naught, then you have a this kind of a solution. Okay, so resonance happens when omega tends to omega naught. Okay, and typically what happens is you then have a situation where it continues, but uh, it continues, uh, you know, when you have this situation where it is close to omega naught or there is a second, uh, uh, you know, or you then end up with an envelope based, the envelope has its own omega and then the damp, uh, you know, the, um, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, the damping is also goes on and then goes off goes on and then goes off okay so that is the other case okay so uh, you know uh, so by varying this uh, uh, you know these equations right so the amplitude increases linearly with time this amplification phenomenon when frequency of periodically applied force becomes equal to the natural frequency is known as resonance in that case the amplitude little bit flattens out Okay. Or in some cases, the amplitude will keep expanding. Okay, So that is when you get this uh, heavy duty, um, what is that, ringing sound which keeps increasing. Okay, Now, the most common case is, of course, the damped oscillator. An oscillator which has a dissipative force like friction. Okay, And that is dictated by this guy called Stokes. Okay. Stokes first came up with this one, and then he came up with another more complicated mathematics, which deals with, uh, you know, Navier-Stokes different equation, which deals with turbulence. Okay, now the dissipative force is uh, is added as minus uh, is proportionate to dx by dt, which is the velocity. Okay, so air resistance is proportionate to the velocity okay sometimes they say it is proportional to the cube of the velocity i don't know you know so there is another force so in addition to d square x by dt square and omega square x negative omega square x you also have this b over m times dx by dt okay so now this is also a linear differential equation and uh, you know, of the second order and this can be solved uh, using uh, you know, standard, uh, there are methods to solve the, these uh, linear differential equations. And so uh, this, that gamma or whatever is called, known as the damping coefficient. So what happens in this case? Okay, so you first solve this one and then after you solve this one, you introduce the other term and then you solve the whole equation. So then you have a envelope which, which, which has an amplitude, okay? Uh, and this is called the overdamped condition. Slowly, instead of going bigger and bigger amplitude, we have a declining amplitude. Then it goes to stop. The amplitude has a e to the x uh, decline, exponential decline of the amplitude. Overdamped condition, it leads to exponential decay of the amplitude. So you have this, 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 this. Stop. Okay. Now the second case is <clears> that's <throat> in the steady state solution. If you're Continuously, you uh, keep the, uh, you're able to do exactly that correct moment. You give it a little bit of a, of a push just at the bottom, give a little bit of a push each time. Then you can completely counteract the energy loss, right?
right? And then you keep going forever like that. Perfect, same um, uh, um, motion, right? You give it little more, it will go tang, 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 and, and your jula will or your swing will go out of control and you will fall from the swing, right? So that is a exponential growth of the oscillation, right? So you keep pushing faster and faster, faster and faster. Just go like that, like that, like that, like that. Okay. So that is a non-resonance condition also. Okay. You're just continuously expanding the amplitude. The amplitude, instead of going uh, down like this in a forced damp os oscillator is swinging out of control. Okay. So these are all the various cases for the damped oscillation. So <clears throat> in Navier-Stokes, or in a Stokes equation, you introduce this second term, which is a damping coefficient. Okay. So why am I belaboring this? So forced damped oscillator, uh, you know, you have both this, this term and this term. Okay. And therefore, you have transient solutions. Okay. So, uh, uh, you know, so one has to, uh, you know, try to understand this a little more. Okay. So, uh, uh, so this is with regard to this uh, this chapter, you know, forced damped oscillator, and then you have the the other one, which is the case where you have undamped, and then you have uh, uh, you know where you have the exponential growth versus the non-exponential growth equation. Okay, so I don't want to go into all the details of these differential equations, but remember the case at which there is resonance where your f cos omega t that tends to this omega closes in on this omega when this omega and this omega become close then you have a resonance case there's a window at which within which it keeps going constantly okay natural frequency you you tend to have the uh, the frequency of being of the push being in tune with the natural frequency. Therefore, you the undamping every time is uh, is ameliorated by your push. Okay, so by the push of your of the person in the jula who kicks kicks their feet. Okay, so then they are continuously counteracting the energy of the decay due to friction. Okay, so uh, there are a lot of things that take place. Uh, it is complicated mathematics, but roughly this, these are the ideas there. Okay, so I don't want to over belabor this because this is a physics class. So next we are briefly going to look at um, um, uh, look at waves. <clears throat> what is a wave? Now we looked at simple harmonic motion. Simple harmonic motion is tied to wave. It is like a sinusoidal action, right? What happens to the distance? It goes back and forth in this way, right? Now, in a wave, like that, okay? Now, a wave has a speed, right? So, you have an amplitude. You have the amplitude of the wave, right? The maximum, that is the amplitude of the wave, right? Then you have the how fast the wave progresses, then you have the frequency. When we do 2 pi by t, that is the period. Period is 1 over frequency. Okay, so if the wave goes like this, goes like this, right, that decides your frequency. So when you hear sound, sound has different frequency. Okay, so you have different types of waves. Okay. The one wave is where is like when you have a string, right? And you tap the string, there is a wave, right? There is a wave in the string. So, okay. So, but the particles of the of the uh, move in terms of the movement, they go up and down, but the wave goes this way. Very surprising, right? Now, <clears throat> when the particles go up and down, but the wave goes this way, we call it a transverse wave. 
Okay. Now, the, the frequency of the wave, right, and the wavelength, okay, the, the wavelength and the frequency of the wave, right, the product of the two gives you the speed of the wave. Okay. V equals F lambda. This is the most fundamental idea that you must learn. Frequency, uh, speed is what? Meters per second. Frequency is what? One by second. Wavelength is what? Meters. Okay, so V equals F lambda. So if you have a sinusoidal wave which is progressing, V equals F lambda. Okay, then second, there is the sinusoidal wave. Then there are two types of waves. One is the transverse wave and there is the, uh, which we just discussed, the string uh, or instrument, you, you, uh, you, 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 uh, you know, you pluck the string instrument, tan, like that. you can hear the sound, right? So that comes from the, the energy is produced from the vibration of the string, and then your ear hears it. So the string produces this, the energy, right, by going, right? It, it does not move, right? But when you have sound waves, what happens is I say, ah, right? <clears throat> My vocal cords vibrate, go back and forth like this. There is a, what is called a vocal cord in my throat. Ah, and what do I do? I blow air over it, okay? Then that goes up and down, up and down, up and down. Therefore, there is a vibration, okay? And the change of the frequency based on that vibration produces variations that we hear as speech okay now sound before i go any further i must tell you what sound is sound is not a tra transverse wave sound is a longitudinal wave so i say ah what happens is the particles are going like this i say ah the particles go forward and in the same direction as the flow of the wave. Okay. So how fast does sound travel? 330 meters per second in normal uh, uh, gaseous air. Right. So the wave moves like that. And so when the wave moves like that, in the same direction as through compression and expansion of these uh, particles, it is called. It's a longitudinal wave. Okay. Now, when the particles move this way, but the wave goes this way, we call it a transverse wave. When the particles move in the same direction as the wave, we call it a longitudinal wave. Both lead to waves. Okay. <clears throat> now, when you when you have the string instrument, you do ta right. Then the particles don't go forward. The 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 particles of the string don't move forward, right? But then it produces a wave. Now, from there, that wave, that energy is transmitted to the to the air around it as sound. Then you hear it. There are two waves, really. Okay? So, that is the basic idea behind waves. So, uh, so what is a wave? Wave is a repeating and periodic disturbance that moves through a medium from one location to another carrying energy. The sun emits a wave called the light wave or infrared wave. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, light is both a wave and sometimes people also say it can also be considered as a particle. And the speed V equals F lambda and the uh, speed is C, denoted by C, 3 to 10 to the power of 8 meters per second, the speed of light. Extremely fast. Okay? Before you see it, light has, takes 7 seconds to leave the sun, which is immensely far. Nobody has gone to the sun, right? And arrived at your doorstep. Okay? So... <clears throat> That is also a wave. Okay, so the study of waves is essential to all uh, the things that we study. Okay, now light waves are used in fiber optics. 
okay and the study of waves is is a fundamental science in itself okay and um, so um, uh, you know so now when we speak of a wave we kind of speak of something which is propagating a a shape that is continuously propagating it could be a sinusoidal shape it could be a this kind of a shape too this you can have a wave of this shape too okay now we have a parabolic wave of the form here this is a parabolic wave a square minus x square is a parabola inverted parabola right so now if you said y of x comma t so if the parabola keeps moving in a certain direction at after each uh, period of time then it becomes a wave okay so y equals a square and x square is just a single parabola but when it when you add a sine component or a cos component then you have a wave after every few seconds the wave it is like this and then it keeps moving like that right so how do you introduce that you have this the wave is the the propagation of the wave is v times t x minus v times t so after a short distance after a short period of time that parabola has moved a certain distance i'm sure you know that uh, you know uh, uh, the transverse uh, movement of a if you have f of t f of x right f of x minus x naught what happens f of x minus x naught so in this case x naught is vt Okay, so f of x minus x naught, you see, f of x minus x naught, right? So it's a transverse migration of the function. Okay, so, uh, so that's how waves propagate. It's a transverse migration and that x naught equals vt. Okay, so that is the mathematics that defines wave propagation. You have y of x. Which is a, a set uh, um, um, function like a sine wave or a, in this case a parabola, but then that is then being shifted on a continuous basis in along an axis. So in this case, y of x comma t, right, keeps moving in the x direction. After every short uh, period of time, it has moved a little bit further down. Okay, so you have seen the oceans, right? You have the waterways right so after it is far away after some time and then slowly it comes and it comes you. wave comes towards you and then it also dampens along the way right we saw learn damping and damping just now right so this is the idea behind waves okay and so i wanted to kind of open this this discussion for you and then discuss it again next time when we will look at the equations then we will look at wave propagation and then we will look at you know additional ideas around uh, waves and sound and everything okay but waves should be studied outside the context of uh, you know right after simple harmonic motion i'd like to teach waves outside the context of the type of wave we will learn about sound and then if, uh, when you do to class 12 there is a separate chapter which discusses electromagnetic waves you know what drives electromagnetic waves and one of those electromagnetic waves is light okay so um <clears throat> so you there is application in all this in uh, in the future uh, simple harmonic motion also you should learn for exactly these reasons that you know electronic circuits is a little bit tied and all this damping etc a little bit tied to the ideas that you learn uh, later on in terms of feedback negative feedback etc so with that, I'm going to stop for today, and then we will discuss these ideas on a, uh, on waves again next time. So with that, I'm going to stop, and then we will, uh, uh, you know, go forward next week. Uh, if it's uh, sun uh, Saturday morning, 